Most business lack three things. Cash flow, capital, and context. Right? Those, those are the three things. So you're working on the cash flow, you're working on the capital, and you're working on the context. That's it. No one's going to do the job that you can do. True. No one's got that drive True. that you can do. True. But here's on the flip side, I'm a big believer of diversifying. So, so here are a couple things. Apple, right? Steve Jobs died. Of course. Tim Cook takes over Apple. Is Apple still driving? Of course. They're a trillion dollar company. It's their product. It's their product. After Steve Jobs, they became a trillion dollar company. Right. So this is a matter of having the right person. Of course. So you want you, you don't want to build a business. This is my, my opinion. Obviously, you don't have to listen to this, but you want to build a business where it's not dependent upon your personality. Sure. Of course, nobody cares about it more than you do. It's your baby. But you just don't want to be. A, so the way I look at it, if somebody can do the job, your job, 80% right, it's worth having that type of person and evolving the other 20% over time. And that person might want to say, you know what? Hey, dude, I want to buy you up. I've been evolving to the position. I want it on this. Boom. Here's your transition strategy. Let me, let me offer you a lump sum. That's it, my man. So all you got to do is find somebody that you trust to build this division while you work on that transition. Oh, of but until you find that person, this is you know, this is back to square one. Yeah. Constant. My suggestion: put a deadline. Because unless oh, you put, course. but unless because unless you put a deadline, it's, it's never gonna happen. We'll be having the same conversation this time next year. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, Matt, I have a lot of my sales guys. A lot of them have the same personality as I do. Yeah. Uh, they're very tight based, right? Which is phenomenal. Uh, but what I'm having an issue with is one day they'll do really great okay. and they'll justify the next day why they didn't do something. Think about that. Because the next the day before, hey, I did it, they couldn't do it, and I did it. So then the next day, they're like, oh, I'm going to do something again. And then after that, well, I'm going to, well, yeah, but I did this yesterday. I did yeah. more than two or three of the regulars. Yeah. So I have a lot of that. Yeah. How do I get the consistency? Yeah. So, for example, we have we have people in Memphis. We got people in Atlanta. We got people in Florida. We got people. In... So, for me, right? Because we're we're a volunteer organization. You know, sales guys are going to do what they want to do. Right. Is that you need to ask them long term? Do you want people completely always dependent upon you? If you're if you're running your own location, you're running your own city. Do you want your business completely dependent upon you and your personality, or you want to based on a process and a system? Uh, yeah, because our our business in running a sales organization, our style is is creating you know, is creating uh, versions of you that are constantly working every day. Now, with that being said, certain guys are going to show up just to shoot a three pointer. Certain guys, certain, yeah, certain guys are going to show up in the fourth quarter. Certain guys, like very rarely, we're going to find a guy that's going to play all four quarters. Right, right. You have to have the the ability to say, you know what, some guys will, some guys won't. I just need to do a better job and find more guys in that city that's going to run a system, that's going to run a process, and they don't have to be the end all be all all the time. Like for me at the office in, in, in Oprah, I don't want to be the end all be all. There's only anything depending on me. When, when, when Sheena and I last month made $110,000, $91,000 in income was from building a business. $22,000 was from her actually. Right, running and, and, and seeing and clients. Right. And so, so what business do you want? If you want to make one hundred ten thousand dollars, dependent upon you. No, I don't. Or do you want to make one hundred ten thousand dollars, where eighty, ninety percent is dependent upon running a business or running a system? That's it. So I, I, I share with them that concept because you don't have to have a team full of playmakers. Yeah, you're a playmaker, but everybody's not going to be a playmaker, right? Right. So you just need to have a bunch of guys that perform consistently on a daily basis and and some guys may uh, pop up and pop down but if you find new talent in that city and state that, that challenges them that competes against them that that's going to make them want to be consistent every day that makes sense. That makes sense. how can we put ourselves in a position how can we train to teach our people to be the one in charge one thing patrick's always told me this is never be afraid of losing people. Because that thought process initially comes from a scarcity mentality I'm afraid to lose people. By realizing that there's hundreds and thousands of people here in Bakersfield. There's in Chicago there's millions of people in right or there's hundreds of millions of people inside the United States. 
right? And I just have trust and faith to know that I am bound to find you. How do you train your people to have that Following your example. You just need to speak into existence. You know, how, how do you get uh, people to speak a certain language? You know, uh, for example, how do you get people who are ESL, that English is a second language, to speak English? Yeah, and you got to speak to them in English. You, you just got to be speaking that dialogue. Right? Changing the and then the you're acting upon it. I didn't tell the rest of my team. Yeah. Right? I got my new person license. I got my new person paid. I got my new person making eight thousand dollars a month. I got, I got a guy that's been working with me for five, six, seven months. He's already making fifty thousand dollars a month. What, what position you want to be? Right? That, that's it. Right? But, you know, so listen. I, I gather you care a lot about your people. Right? Yeah. You're that person that cares a lot about you. You, know, and you kind of feel bad about giving them tough talk. To say, okay, cool. Right? So, in other words, if, if you don't have that that dialogue, just listen, I'm in charge. It's my business. I'm in control. Right. You're not verbalizing and talking about that. There's a period of time where I stop leaning on somebody, stop leaning on somebody, stop leaning on somebody, because you're just not responding. If they don't respond, you know what they're telling you? I don't need your help. Knock yourself out? No problem. Come to me when you're serious. Come to me when you got something else going on. That's okay. Because most businesses lack three things. Cash flow, capital, and context. Right? Those, those are the three things. So you're working on the cash flow, you're working on the capital, and you're working on the context. That's it. Listen, so if that's your macro goal to be this, and the things that you're looking to build, it costs a lot of money. Not only costs a lot of money, but you need the right context to actually make those things Right, because then you're going to need permits, you're going to need help, you might need some government assistance in terms of politicians and permits, you know, those type of things. Especially if you're operating from a non-profit standpoint, people want to fund and finance your, 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 your mission you know, as an organization. But the way I look at it, see in Chicago, you've heard, of, you've heard of the Mississippi River, right? The river that goes right down the middle of the, pretty much of the country. Right? It, goes, it, goes, it starts from Minnesota, it goes all the way down to Louisiana. But guess what, that Mississippi River, touches a lot of states like that river it goes off into different streams rivers and tributaries you got to be the mississippi river of what you want to fund and finance that'd be it you can't say okay i'm going to diversify here and trickle here trickle and then it gets lost you got to be able to say i'm just going to open up this dam i'm going to open up this and i'm going to funnel ever since one. but what you got to do first you got to create that you got to create that river Right? And by the way, the things that you want to do, you need to be in a multi-million, if not deca-million level. I know you won't. And if you don't work hard enough, you'll be all at the same. You'll be at the same pace. So, for example, like flying on an airplane, my nose might get off the ground, but my ass needs to get off the ground too. And if I'm flying in the air, do I let off? No. Right? I can get here to what? A cruising altitude, 35,000 feet. And then, then that's when I can cruise. So you gotta figure out what that cruising financial altitude is for you. If that's your dream, your goal, you gotta actually create a number on it. Because you can create a number around it, right? Then you can create the, the, the stream of cash flow to get there, the down payment, the relationships, the contacts, the capital, to make that reality. The reason I discovered the Money Smart Guy is not because I was all wise and say I'm the money smart guy. Dude, I found it by accident. They couldn't pronounce my last name. So I was doing work with the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago for Money Smart Week. So what they had me do, they had me do a bunch of media interviews to promote Money Smart Week on behalf of the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. All right, welcome, welcome to the show, Matt Samula. <laughs> welcome to the show, Matt Sim Spatula. So I, they can never say my last name. So one time, there's two Matthews at the office. Matthew Feeney and Matthew Sapal. Matthew Feeney did like payroll stuff. I was the financial guy of the office. So uh, one of the media uh, uh, producers calls the office. We want Matt to to come on a show to talk about money smart. Da da da. Great, no problem. Which Matt do you want to talk to? I uh, can't remember. Uh, the guy that does the money smart week stuff. You know the money smart guy. <laughs> right? My reception calls me. But hey, you got a call here from you know so and so uh, news news station. By the way, they called you the money smart guy. What? Oh, come in, my smart guy. Holy shit. And by the way, I've had three different company names, team names, American Retirement Architects, 
and Matthew Sapala Inc. Money, money Smart Guy, and then, and then Money Smart Guy evolved because it was more than just a guy. It became a movement. That's why the Money Smart Movement now is the brand. So, so I'm, I'm building two brands, Money Smart Movement, Money Smart Guy. Money Smart Guy is going to have a finite... Right? When, when they put me in the ground, that's when the Money Smart Guy is done. The Money Smart Movement live forever. Valuetainment will live forever. Right? The agency will live forever. So I like the company name. Personally branded, I'm just a brand underneath the entire brand.